Well, first, I want to thank our fans for coming out, supporting. It was an unbelievable environment. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, great to be back and supported in Kansas City. Um, I was happy to see our guys be able to play uh, in their home, home, home crowd, home city, meaning uh, Tamar Bates, Aiden Shaw. Uh, as it relates to the game, heads off to Seton Hall, one of uh, Ken Palm's um, top 20 defenses, uh, half court wise, unbelievable basketball team, great coach. Uh, NCAA tournament team, there's no doubt about it. I thought they did a tremendous job uh, during the course of the game. It's impossible to win ball games if your opponent's going to shoot 60%. They made shots where they were uh, consistently making five threes a game on average. Um, you know, they, their players made plays, and they ended up with 10 threes on the game. And I thought some were just open looks, uh, and, and the basketball went in for them. The other part of it was our, um, their, their assists. I thought they were very unselfish without, uh, with the ball, being able to find some open looks and move how they needed to move. But credit our opponents. Uh, that's a great team. And I, I credit our guys as well for what they've done in the last four minutes of that game. And if we can bottle that last four minutes up, uh, it would be a, a completely different game. And I just thought our guys overthought uh, trying to play perfect in that situation. Questions? What were some of the things defensively that was allowing those open looks for Seton Hall? Uh, it's, defense starts with communication. Uh, it starts with communication and obviously uh, not getting deflected passes. I thought they were able to get no resistance in that swing. Uh, the other part of it is when you see the scouting report and you notice certain guys not make threes, uh, I thought um, Zero did a great job. Um, you know, he did a tremendous job to the first two field goals were open threes for him, but they were contested. One of them was contested, I believe, and it got them going. It got them in a rhythm. Uh, so I just credit, you know, a good basketball team at the end of the day. For tomorrow and Jesus, coach talks about bottling up those last few minutes. You guys have had a couple games where you kind of dug a big hole and, and really fought back. So how do you ex extend that over 20 to 40 minutes? What's the key there? <clears throat> I feel like just when we tip the ball up, we have to start the game with a mentality of we already down 20. I feel like when we dig those holes, that's when we get desperate, we play really hard and you can see that in that last four minutes. So we just got to be able to change our mindset, um, whether it's at the beginning of the game or if it's after the team makes a run, we just got to be able to not let our energy be dictated off making shots and just being able to just play hard no matter what the scoreboard says. Yeah, I kind of agree with what he said. Um, we got to be able to play on our, on our toes. Uh, there were times we were just playing on our heels. And uh, yeah, like he said, we can't affect our offense, dictate our defense. We got we got bother on the, uh, well, they were playing way too comfortable. They were getting paint touches, they were swinging the ball, and then the next pass was wide open. So we got to be able to be better on the ball pressure and um, yeah, just be tougher on defense. Seton Hall had 44 paint points. What allowed them to get so uh, easily into the heart of the defense? Uh, that's just Big East basketball at the end of the day. Again, this team relies on driving, uh, very physical drives as it relates to their offense. And, um, you know, being able to get downhill, they made some tough paint shots, uh, really good paint shots. So I credit those guys for making the plays. On the opposite end, we wasn't able to make our paint touches or our paint shots. Uh, the balance of the game is, is in those two-point field goals. And when you look at our stats, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with our stats. When you look at shooting 50% from three, being able to get to the foul line, shoot 86%. We just have to minimize those percentages. And I credit Seton Hall for knocking down jump shots. And ultimately, that's what they did. Uh, if you look at the course of, of, of the scouting reports, they've not shot the ball that well, uh, especially in that first half. And I thought they did a good job uh, this game. What's your message down 19? What do you, what do you say to your guys? I know you said that they saw them overthinking. What do you say yeah. to them trying to get back? Just continue to play uh, like any any coach. I, I just try to tap into our guys mental, try to minimize their stresses, uh, let them know 
look, it's not about just making shots. I know you're missing some shots, but you got to play through the mental fatigue, the mental emotions that when the ball's not bouncing your way or certain calls not, not being given to you that you know uh, isn't the right calls, you just got to play through those, play through adversity, and get to the next play. It's a, it's a game of, of inches. It's a game of bounces, and we got to be able to be prepared to get the bounce. And I thought our guys did it in certain spurts. We just didn't do enough of it over a course of 40 minutes. The last four minutes of basketball was electric. Uh, I thought going into the half, uh, those first couple minutes, we didn't give ourselves a chance. Uh, but ultimately, I credit Seton Hall. They shot two free throws in the first half and ended up into the game with 23, right? And some of those were and one baskets as well. So though that, that was three point plays on the field goals, but also three point plays in, in the paint that they were able to 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 manufacture. And it was some difficult shots, off hand shots, left hand shots. And it's just a style of basketball that they play. And that's why we wanted to schedule this game. We wanted a unbelievable Big East team. Uh, and I thought Seton Hall was that. I knew as it relates to the scheduling where Big East basketball stood, right? The other thing was what can give us a look to prepare us for the SEC. And it's no different than our previous games. Our previous games, you look at every one of our lessons learned um, and the L's we took, those are all NCAA tournament teams. Jackson State is an NCAA tournament team. Seton Hall is an NCAA tournament team. Kansas is an NCAA tournament team. And we all except for myself, staff, and players, we knew how good Memphis was, NCAA tournament team, and you look at their schedule, each team that we've played and got those lessons from, you gotta understand the big picture. The big picture in 30 games, those teams will beat several opponents in their conference and non-conference. Memphis is a prime example of that. After our game against Memphis, they have beaten probably, they've had the toughest stretch of games <laughs> in the country and they've won, won in difficult places. This team tonight, Seton Hall, they will do the exact same thing when it comes to their conference. What does that mean about us? That means we have won against some NCAA tournament teams. Pittsburgh is an NCAA tournament team. That is a good team. Minnesota, not sure where they'll be, but they're trending in the right direction. So I'm, I'm excited about what I see. We just got to use these as lessons and get get where we need to get to for a full 40 minutes. Tamar, you tied a career best scoring performance today. What was it about today's game that um, uh, helped you achieve that accomplishment? And also, how do you translate that into the conference season? <clears throat> the team and just, just needed more from me, whether that was defensively or offensively, and I just let the game come to me. I didn't force too much. I had a few moments where I did, which would, which caused some turnovers. But for the most part, I just got a lot of my, my baskets within the offense. But I mean, I, I just translate that just by staying patient and, and staying aggressive and just playing off of instincts. Uh, it's, it's not really too much to it. But, you know, we just got to translate that to, to wins and, you know, just be able to just re respond like, like I said, like just respond when 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 we get punched in the face. So um, yeah, the the stats is cool and all, but you know we, the bigger picture is about getting W's. I know you're not happy with with the outcome, but coach talked about it. it need experience for you and Aiden, I would, I would guess, to come home and play. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely nice. The only time I've ever played in this arena was when I was in the sixth grade, and it was at halftime of the K State and North Carolina game. And I scored the first book and my parents sent Coach Gates a video before the game. But it, it was just, it, it, it was nice to actually be able to play here and just have a full circle moment. I'm sure Aiden could say the same, but it was, it, it was huge. A lot of my family's here, people I went to high school with. So it was, it was real nice being able to come back home and play. Coach, yep. Noah's had a rough couple of games shooting the ball. I'm just curious what you've seen from him the past couple of outings and what you want to see better from him. I've seen his rebounds increase. I've, uh, he finished with nine points, nine rebounds, right? Uh, he's missing open shots. I want him to continue to take them. Uh, there's nothing that he's doing wrong. He just got to be able to finish. Uh, tonight, he was one for 12. We're not a good team if he's going to shoot one for 12. Uh, he got to the foul line. He was able to do some things. What I am proud about is this. I'm proud of Zeus. 
and the minutes he played, uh, and he's not played this many minutes in a long time. He finished with 17 minutes and produced and did a great, great, unbelievable uh, justice to why he should be playing more. Uh, so I'm proud of his concentration. I'm proud of Aiden Shaw. He did not start the game. I thought he was probably trying to be too perfect uh, playing in front of his home, um, home, hometown and home friends and family, loved ones. And it just did not go the way that he probably wanted it to. Uh, but I am, when I look at the course of the game, I look at the 7-0 run that we made when we cut it to nine, and I would not choose any free throw shooter other than Sean East to go shoot free throws. When does Sean East miss two free throws? He got to be able to knock those down. And then, obviously, when we cut the lead, 76-70, uh, uh, I think we were on like a 15-1 run. I, I, I I believe Seton Hall came down and shot one of those difficult and ones, or their bigs who shoot 50% from the free throw line made their free throws. So those are moments that is a sign of a great team being able to overcome their statistics in certain situations, but hold on to a victory when the momentum is, are, is, is completely against them. Uh, I thought we, we put ourselves in an unbelievable situation in the last four minutes to come away with a win. They executed on the free throw line other than a couple misses, and we were able um, to not execute in certain spots and Noah Carter or those open threes uh, that we missed that we normally make. Time for Dennis, one last question. Dennis, Dennis. Go ahead. You've mentioned a couple of times trying to play too perfect. Can you just elaborate on what you mean by that? As competitors, right? As competitors, young people want to just appease. They want to appease um, and just play a great ball game, whether it's the external factors or not. They want to just be as good as they can versus going there and take the risk, the necessary risk that is associated with the game of basketball. Uh, and ultimately, that's where I see trying to play perfect, getting in the way. Aiden Shaw, he was there. Think about how an antsy and anxious he was to try to get a rebound. But he mistimed it on the free throw line. But the ball still bounced our way, and we had the ball. So that's what I mean by too perfect. He's in his career where he's looking at that as a downfall. Man, that's my ball. I should have had that rebound. So the recovery from that, it wasn't even a mistake because it's our ball. It's just him trying to be a little bit more perfect and do those things that I know he can do that he's done in practice and be able to uh, get more rebounds per minute, which is the challenge that I set out for him. Same with Noah Carter. How, op how more open do you want to be? Uh, and I will live with him shooting those shots because they're wide open. But is it out of instinct or just trying to get it just right because he's wide open? Uh, Sean East down on himself because he made a couple turnovers. Even Tamar Bates made a couple turnovers. But are we playing through those mistakes? I thought the one person that played through every mistake uh, that they made was Nick Honor. Uh, Zeus did a tremendous job as well as Trent Pierce. Those guys really played through uh, the mistakes. Tamar Bates had an unbelievable first half, but I thought he was trying to will his team back with his offense versus his defense. And defensively, when he was in, we were able to get some stops, and ultimately we overran some plays, and we were able to get some scores, and uh, that's how we cut the lead. But I'm proud of the last four minutes. I'll watch the video to see what else there is in the game so we can continue to learn lessons against the great teams that we're playing. Right. M-I-Z.